Hello, everybody. My name is Dear Angelina, and I'm presenting my project for Intro to Material Science, and it is about ceramics. Ceramics are inorganic, non-metal materials that are composed of two or more elements, one of which can be a metal, that are found in our everyday lives. They are categorized into crystalline ceramics and non-crystalline ceramics. Their properties include high melting point, high electricity resistance, and the low density. They are good thermal isolators and chemically inert, which means they do not interact with the environment. They are brittle, have zero ductility, and are low and have a low tensile strength, which means they cannot be shaped after they are hardened or stretched even more. There are two factors that contribute into their structure. That is charge neutrality, and the number of opposite neighbors that they have. In the first characteristics, the net charge in a ceramic should be zero, which will indicate the molecules and the atom will move in such a way that the overall charge of the molecular will be zero. Let's take, for example, silicon dioxide. Silicon has a charge of four plus. But meanwhile, oxygen has a charge of two minus. Therefore, we will need two oxygen atoms to make up for the four plus positive charge of the silicon atom, and the four chemical formula ends up being CiO2. The same would go on for aluminum oxide or iron oxide. The second factor is that in a ceramic crystal structure, the ions itself, we want to maximize the number of charge opposite neighbors. Because a cation gives us electron, it doesn't have the same radius as an anion. Therefore, the ratio is different. A cation will want to stay close to an anion and so on. Therefore, in their structure, we want to have the maximum number of a cation touching another anion and the minimum number of similarly charged ions touching each other. In the third picture, as we see here, the crystal structure is stable because cation is touching another anion and none of the anions are touching each other. The ratio of the cation and the anion will inherently influence the coordination number, which will influence the crystal structure type. And here in this table, we can see the different ratios and the different coordination numbers that go with each ratio. We have structure types like AX, ANXM, and ANBM, XP. AX means where the cation and the anion have a ratio of one to one. NA, N, and XM will say that the, there are a different number of cations and anions, which means there are different type of valences in them. And then N, A, N, B, M, and XP means that we have three or more materials that are affecting the structure. The geometry can go from linear to triangle, tetrahedral, octahedral, and cubic. And it can be FCC or a simple cubic structure. Some of these uh, examples we can see here are zinc plate that has a coordination of four, CAF2 that has a coordination of six, and TIBOO3 that has a coordination of six as well. These are structures that are in the form of ANXM and TABAO3, it's ANBMXP. Here we have the example of three different crystal structure. Zinc blade with a coordination number of four, salt with a coordination number of six, and CSCL with a coordination number of eight. In zinc blade structure, the ions are arranged in cubic closed packaging manner. There are eight tetrahedral voids and four octahedral voids present. The S2 mice ions are presented in the corner of the cube and at each center of each face. The zinc ions are present in the alternative tetrahedral void. Each zinc ion is surrounded by tetrahedrally by four sulfur ions, and each sulfur ion is surrounded by four zinc ions. Thus, the structure has a four by four coordination. For salt, the cubic structure is a face center cubic crystalline structure as well. It has four cations and four anions. The ratio for the cation and the anion will always be the same. So for all of these three compounds, the structure type, it is AX. The cubic structure of salt will be the same whether we start with sodium or with chloride as our first center of perspective, as we can see over here. Lastly, for our third structure, we have cesium chloride. It is in the form of a simple cubic structure. And same as salt, it doesn't depend whether we have the chloride in the center or the cesium in the center, 
However, cesium chloride is more stable than NaCl. Based on their applications, ceramics are categorized into glasses, refractors, cement, abrasive ceramic biomaterials, carbons, advanced ceramics, and clay. Glasses are ceramics that are made from turning a non-crystalline structure, like quartz, into a polycrystalline structure. Refractors are ceramics that are designed to withstand high levels of temperature, for example, bricks. Cement are ceramics that are used for mixing water and then left to dry on their own, and then they form a hard material. Abrasives are ceramics that are used to cut or grid another softer materials. For ceramic biomaterials, we have ceramics that are used in teeth implants, bone implants, for dextrose structural salt is one of them as well. For carbon, we have graphite, carbon nanotubes, and diamonds. Advanced ceramics are ceramics that are mixed with other materials like metal or polymers to create different composite structures. And lastly, we have clay products. Clay is the main form which we associate ceramics with. Clay is extracted from the clay mineral, colon. In its formula, it has potassium, aluminum, magnesium, iron, silica, and water. The particles are surrounded by a thin film of water that, when it gets wet, it develops plasticity and it's easy to shape in any type of form that we want. When we dry it and when we apply heat, the materials become hard, brittle, and not plastic and will keep its shape forever. Because of the iron oxide that it has, clay can have many colors, including red, brown, and maroon. Clay is used a lot in ceramic cookware. The way that a salami cookware is produced is by first having a base layer of metal that can be cast iron, copper, or aluminum, and then finishing it on top with thin layer of clay. And there are too many reasons why ceramic cookware are so important in our daily lives. First, they are safe to be on the freezer, microwave, grill, and oven. Ceramics pots and pans, they can resist high levels of temperature. That doesn't go for any type of cookware that we have. If we have Teflon, for example, this material becomes toxic when heated over 570 degrees Fahrenheit, and it will release toxic chemicals like PFOAs that will be bad for our health as well. And second, ceramic is a non-reactive. Unlike some other materials, including cast iron, aluminum, and copper, they don't interact with acidic foods, and they don't form lust or metallic flavors. Food graders are mostly made of aluminum. With time, with a lot of washes, with being exposed to the air, they will become rust. That's because metals, they interact with the atmosphere and other. This doesn't happen with clay. That's why it is very safe to use in cookware. Here we have an example of a clay grater that can resist for the entire life. This was my project. Thank you so much for listening. And these are my works cited. Bye-bye.